All right, today's daily rehab, we're gonna work on the TFL, the tensor fascia lata. Now, not often injured, but in one of my patients it is, and I'll tell you why, but first of all, the tensor fascia lata, small little muscle. You probably think, how's that getting injured? A lot of you have pain in that area, but it's not that muscle. It might be round from the glute, or it might be referred from your back, but if you've got problems with that tense fascia lata, meaning it's been strained or overworked because it's weak and it's inflamed then i've got some mobility work to do and some strengthening work to do and also to tie in some glute med work to do to sort of fix up the course now you're going to be thinking the muscle is coming down from the side of the pelvis okay into your itb like that right it also works with your glutes around here to work into that itb as well okay so the section of muscles is a very small section, and we're going to work on the mobility part of that here. Then we're going to work on strengthening work combined with some glute, and I'll explain why we're doing the glute work as well. But let's work on some mobility stuff because most of you, if you strain this muscle, or it's overworked, it's really tight, you feel like there's some triggers, you want to get in there, then working on some mobility work helps relieve it, loosen it up a bit, so then you can strengthen it and fix it. So this is your friend for tensor fascia lata. You can also use a ball, it's a little bit more brutal, and so for those of you who can handle that, that's good, but why don't you start off with a foam roller. So what you do, real simple, to get that area, you go right on your side, and instead of just staying there on the elbow, what I do is, is find that section. So you've got to go find the top of your pelvis where that bone is. Roll back, find your greater trochanter, which is the, the edge of that femur bone, okay? It's halfway in between, right? So you go bone, bone, that's the section you're looking at. So it's only that long. Then what you do is drape yourself down over it. So you're gonna stay stacked with your hips like that. So the weight of your body on that, you've gotta try and relax your bottom leg, is gonna do the work. So you can stay there, you won't have to move too much because most of the roller, the width of that roller is taking up most of that muscle. So you're getting mobility work done, pressure, trigger point release done through the entire muscle. It's great to work on. What you can do though is roll back and forward, okay? So it's the anterior part of the muscle and nail that and then come back and roll to the posterior part of it. And you might get a little bit of glute with that, but this is a great way of you just doing a relaxing, mobility stretch to try and relieve that. Now some people get a bit of referral down your ITB or down your leg with that. If it's a super tight, that's okay. As long as it goes away when you stop and feels better afterwards. If that's not enough, then what you work on is getting stuck in to your trigger point ball or your cross ball. These ones are a bit brutal. I always go for a hard one with no spikes. The smooth one's way better. Then what you do is sit that and then find a smaller spot. So this is going to get sections that are a lot smaller, okay? Then you can slowly, and I mean slowly, go down because then your full body weight's on that. Now you might go to the point, oh, that's too much. So just be careful with this. You might even have to lift yourself off with this leg. So I can lift myself off there and then put down as much body weight as I want through it and then roll around and find that really sensitive spot. Now, remember, if you've gone and injured it, and it's super sensitive, this is probably not the idea is to go and re-aggravate it. So sometimes you just gotta back off a little bit and work on strengthening work before you can start really nailing with this. But if it's been a chronic thing that's been there for a while and it's sort of quite dead and tight in there, then these things loosen up quite well. Then you've got to work on some strengthening. Now the entry level stuff is just getting you into some abduction of the hip. Remember this muscle does some abduction of the hip, but it also works on connecting your ITB and does some stuff when you're running. So you sort of got to, when you strengthen it, you've got to think I've got to do all of its functions. So the first thing you can do is a side raise. Now you might start off, if you're a little bit weak, start off without a loop band, chuck that aside, work on, instead of clams, work on side raises. So they are straight legs. If I'm going to work on this one, I want this back behind that leg, all right, but my hip forward so it's still stacked okay meaning one on top of the other don't have your hip backwards like this because then you're going to start working on the anterior part of the hip and working on your hip flexion your rectus femoris you want to work on your tfl and your glute so you keep it forward all right and i want that toe down so heel up toe down then what you try and do is raise your leg up to maybe just above sort of parallel 
don't start working on full movement like that because what's going to happen is you probably don't have the hip range to do that unless you're hypermobile and you're just going to arch your back and do a side flexion of your back which is not going to be that helpful okay you want to isolate this area you also want to teach your brain to be stable while you do that so if you're a runner or anything like that you don't want to be moving around in your spine when you're doing a, a movement like running. So you've got to stabilize here and just think, I only want to go from the ground up to height. And when I feel like I'm sort of pinching in at the waist or bending at the waist, that's where you need to stop. And you may find that the long lever load like that is absolutely enough to make that muscle work really hard, okay? Now, if this is an overload issue, you've got to think about the glute work. So what I want you to try and do when you do this exercise is instead of just raising your leg, you've got to think about, can I clench my buttock at the same time? So I'm more likely to get my glute med working in abduction to help out because most of the time, we talked about this before, how what's the cause? It'll probably be a weak glute med not doing a good enough job when you are running or squatting or whatever you're doing that brings on this TFL pain. Most people who are who get this are runners and they're running without enough glute med and so the TFL has to work super hard and maybe their knees rolling and that's something that puts a lot of stress to it. So if you can strengthen up the two as a unit. So I think if I'm doing TFL strengthening, I'm also doing glute med because they'll, they'll work together to help abduct the hip. That's their job, right? It also is job to stabilize the hip. So what you can do, you can go from doing that abduction and like I said, if you need a loop band, put the band on, let me show you that. You put the band on like this above the knees nice and flat okay so when you go through this part back to here again when i raise up i've got some tension okay so the next level up would be can you load it up and get that fatigue happening in here a good fatigue to try and improve your strength in that muscle directly once you've done that we want to go into function okay so tfl that'll work on abduction that's like isolate the strengthening of the muscle then you want to make the muscle do a job you know and do a job that it's not doing when you are running so what you do is you go into a what we call a hip hitch or it's like abducting the hip but we're stabilizing at the same time so it's a little take on my one leg ball squat so if i'm doing my left tfl in glute med i want to have the leg here my right leg against the ball okay so it's the leg that's this leg is the standing leg that I'm doing. Normally, with a one leg ball squat, I'm pushing in like that and squatting like this. Now that's gonna get your glute med big time. What we're gonna to do to try and target the TFL this time is do the same movement here where I'm pushing in, okay? So from that point there, I'm gonna push my knee into the ball, okay? Nice little soft Pilates ball like that. That's gonna get me working here already. I've got static load just straight on. What I can then do, which is what you don't do in the ball squat, is then drop the hip into that movement there, okay? And then abduct the hip like that. So this is what you don't do on a one leg ball squat. So when I'm doing a one leg ball squat, I don't want movement like that. I wanna keep my pelvis stable. But what you can do, if you wanna isolate this big time, is when you're pushing in, creating that stability there at the hip, you're then going down and up. So all I need to work on is focus on drop my knee lift my knee and I can feel that just caning me here. You get that right, you'll feel that TFL work but you'll also feel your glute med work because what I'm doing is I'm stabilizing my pelvis through my leg but I'm also doing hip adduction. Okay, I'm raising and lowering my pelvis so I'm working on the function directly and I'm stabilizing. It's a nice little combo. So that will get you your strengthening work you need for that TFL injury, and hopefully that'll get you on the road to getting that right. But like I said, start off with your mobility. Work on some isolated stuff, but then combine it. Get its function back, so when you're running, you're learning to keep your pelvis level, not let it drop all the time. You're learning to get the strength to lift it up. Because nine times out of 10, that injury is probably happening because when you run, you're dropping your pelvis. Okay, if you can fix that, you'll fix this. See you next time.